Lately, I've been thinking a lot about matter and specifically I've been thinking about mass. Something that's always bothered me is that in physics, we talk about the difference between mass and weight all the time, but conceptually in our minds, we don't always make that distinction. I find that for myself and for a lot of my students, when I try and picture what mass is representing, often the only option I'm left with is to think about mass as how difficult it might be to pick something up or how much force it's being pushed towards the ground with. So this is disconnect between the way that we talk about mass in physics and the way that I understand it physically. As a physics teacher, it's really important for me to address misconceptions in science and especially in physics. Physics is an area of study where there are lots of things that we talk about which are counterintuitive. The way that our brain pictures scenarios does not necessarily match with the physical laws that we know about the universe. For this reason, I find it very helpful to have multiple different frameworks through which I can visualize or think about things in physics. Mass is such a core component of physics and yet I don't really have that many different ways to visualize or measure mass. While I was doing this thinking, I did some Googling and this isn't something new. This is something that I probably should have come across before, but I've never come across and it's something called an inertial balance. I've got one here. I actually put this inertial balance together yesterday to do some of my own experiments with it to see how it worked. I built a few different prototypes because I'd never used this apparatus before and I was interested in how it worked. I was interested in how precise it could be and all that sort of stuff. So our motivation for today is to come up with a demonstration that is able to separate mass from weight in a visual way. The principle behind this device is rather simple. When I push the end of the balance to one side, the springiness of the saw blades pushes it back to the middle. The force exerted by these blades does not change when I add mass to the balance. Because objects with more mass have more inertia, it takes longer for the blades to spring back. Therefore, the more mass there is on the platform, the slower the balance will swing back and forth. When I first came across the inertial balance, I got really excited. Immediately, I started thinking about how big I could make it and how interesting it would be to measure a person's mass on what's effectively a carnival ride. Unfortunately, I've had to shelve my dream of building a terrifying and oversized bathroom scale for a couple of reasons. We live in Sydney and at the moment we're in a lockdown. My tools are at our farm, which is outside of Sydney, so I had to write off anything that I couldn't do with simple hand tools we already had. I also thought it might annoy our neighbours if I built some ugly physics toy in our shared backyard. I'm still very excited by the idea of strapping some poor victim into a giant inertial balance though, so hopefully I'll make a follow-up video sometime after lockdown finishes. Building these small prototypes was relatively straightforward, although I did run into some roadblocks along the way. Initially, I wanted to saw a small slit in the edge of each piece to slide the blade into. The idea was to sandwich the blade between these two bits of wood with a screw, but that ended up cracking it. What I ended up doing was cutting a little shelf for the blade to sit on and then screwing it directly into the side of the block. I tried to put another hole in the saw blades as well to keep them from moving up and down, but without a drill, this was nearly impossible. Instead, I used another screw above the blade to hold it against that little shelf. The last issue I had was how to actually hold mass to the little platform. At first I thought about hollowing out the block of wood, but quickly gave up when I realised that I would have to do so by hand. I ended up using a little disposable plastic bowl screwed to the platform. Let's talk about how we measure mass. Most of the time, we're using either a scale or a spring balance to measure mass. A scale has springs inside of it. So this scale has some springs underneath each one of these feet. And these springs have been measured so that when they are compressed by a certain distance, that requires a precise amount of force. And so essentially, by measuring the distance that these springs get depressed, you can work out the force pushing down on this scale, pushing the scale into the ground, which tells you about the weight of the object on top of it. This is not the same as mass, remember? Mass and weight are two different things. We know that weight is equal to an object's mass multiplied by its acceleration due to gravity. And the problem with this is that your weight will be different on the moon, or on Mars, or in some other celestial body, or in space. So a scale is great for converting between weight and mass here on Earth, and it's a great way to quickly find out an object's mass just using the acceleration due to gravity. A spring balance works in much the same way. So we've got two methods here for measuring mass, both of which rely on 
balancing the force of a spring against the force of gravity. Neither of these are going to give accurate readings of weight somewhere else in the solar system or somewhere else in the universe other than right here on the surface of Earth. Another way that we can measure mass is by comparing two masses to each other using an old school either mass balance or something even more traditional like your um, Greek scales, like the uh, Roman, Roman scales. What are they called? It's like the Libra star sign, that sort of scales. Here, we place an object whose mass we know on one side and an object whose mass we don't know on the other side. And then we titrate the mass of the known object until it exactly equals the mass of the unknown object. We're comparing the strength with which gravity falls on one object and the strength with which gravity falls on another. One of the advantages of this system is that it will still be accurate on another planet. For example, on the moon, if you have some masses of a known specific mass and some even unknown mass, with that same apparatus, you can accurately measure the mass of the new object. If we had no gravity acting, or if we are in free fall, for example, or microgravity, we're not gonna be able to use this technique. I spoke at the beginning of the video about misconceptions, and I think I'd better elaborate on that. Mass is an intrinsic property of an object, which means that it doesn't change when that object is put in a different environment. The fact that an astronaut weighs much less on the moon than on Earth is due to the fact that the moon is smaller than the Earth, rather than anything about the astronaut changing. What changes is the astronaut's weight, which is simply a measure of the force that is pulling them towards the ground. On Earth, that force is larger than it is on the moon. I think that this is a point that's understood by many and doesn't necessarily require any serious questioning of our assumptions. Something that I see more people struggle with is the idea of weightlessness. When we describe an astronaut aboard the International Space Station as weightless, it doesn't mean that they aren't affected by gravity. In fact, these engineers and scientists are affected by almost the exact same force on the ISS as they are on Earth. It's just that they're in free fall. The ISS is falling towards the ground constantly, but it just happens to be moving fast enough to the side as well that it always misses the Earth. Objects that are in free fall are still affected by gravity, but we say that they're weightless because they're not being pushed directly into the ground like we are on the surface of the Earth or even on the surface of the Moon. The application of this apparatus is not just in deep space or on other planets, but anywhere that's not the surface of the Earth. In building these inertial balances, I was able to get just enough precision to make some interesting measurements, but not enough to be totally happy. It seems that cutting wood clamped to an unstable surface doesn't make for the most precisely shaped blocks. And here's the punchline of the whole video. These two balances have roughly the same measurements, although it seems that they're slightly mismatched. Either way, you can see with no mass on them at all, they remain synchronized for a while after I release them. When I place some mass on one of them though, this is what I was hoping for, a nice simple visual that shows how mass does not simply control the size of a weight force, but the size of all forces acting on an object. I had a lot of fun making this video and I took a lot of footage in the process, not all that made it into this final cut. When I first started this project, I thought I was gonna focus a lot more heavily on the science and the data of this apparatus. I figured it didn't really fit into this video that you've just watched now. So what I'm actually going to do, I'm gonna put that into a separate video where I go through the measurements that I took, some of the data analysis I did. I'll also go over the science that underpins how this piece of kit works 
and they'll look into some of the places where this actually touches other parts of science. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any feedback or questions, please be sure to drop them in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.